Okay, I'll say hello again, everybody. Uh, I'm Mike Ferrante from Century 21 and the 21 Mike team, and we're doing a live training that we do virtually every week. Uh, we're doing 46 weeks this year. We're only taking a couple of weeks off. And of course, with the whole coronavirus thing going on, uh, we had a change of plans. And so the topic today is specifically going to be how to adapt our business and how to um, not only survive through the weeks or months that we're going to be on lockdown, but actually thrive and come out of this at the end of it with a business that is still healthy. And, you know, I mean, we, we still have to make make a living. And what's kind of interesting is the governor has deemed us an essential business, right? I'm, I'm sure you guys all saw that. Now, I wanted to start with that because essential doesn't mean business as usual. Okay, so please don't misconstrue that as, oh yeah, we can go on listing appointments and showings just like just like normal. That's not the case. Um, by the way, guys, I'll interject real quick that we do have a chat box here. I'll just type a quick hello message so you can see it. It's probably easiest if you type any questions or comments you have in the chat as I've got everyone muted. And then uh, if you wanna rewatch this, we do post these videos to YouTube. So back to my point, it's not business as usual, but we are considered an essential service. And what that means is that people have to have a place to live. Right now, we're all kind of quarantined in our homes, right? So if you have someone whose lease is up and they have to move and the landlord can't make other accommodations or uh, someone's being relocated here, for example, or they're under uh, financial stress where maybe they have a vacant home, they've already moved out and they were planning on putting a home on the market, we have been allowed by the state to continue working during this time because we're, quote, an essential service. Now, that still means we have to practice the correct procedures that they've recommended, the social distancing. Uh, if we are working with someone, say someone comes in from out of town this weekend and they're, they need a home, um, we are able to work with them, but don't ride with them in the same car. You know, you, you have to drive separately as you're going through showings. Um, I'm sorry, Tony's texting me. <laughs> We're in. Uh, so hopefully Tony will be joining us in a second. But um, you, you have to, like, when you're on showings, stay apart. You know, people in the same household are, are able to congregate. But if you're not in the same household, you can't be standing next to them and, and with them. I recommend uh, that we wear gloves. You know, wear surgical gloves and uh, masks. And I know I'm told that the masks don't really help that much, but the way I look at it, they can't hurt. And further, you know, should we cough or sneeze or something, you know, hopefully we're not unsuspecting carriers of the coronavirus. But you know, at least wearing the mask is something that will that will help. Um, I'm carrying hand sanitizer in my vehicle. So when I'm done after every house that I go into, by the way, only going into vacant houses right now, every time I'm sanitizing my hands and, you know, encouraging the people, you know, if you're, if you're with sh people that you're showing houses, encourage them to do the same. Um, you know, how can we possibly do listings? So, so, so that's buyers. How can we do listings? As you guys know, if you're, you know, part of the team, we're doing all kinds of video uh, video tours. Um, we, we have Matterport technology where we can do a 3D photography of the house because right now this isn't just a uh, free time for people to go out looking at houses. Uh, our owners, Tony and Brenda, were talking about th this earlier uh, last night. They were saying, look, we don't want agents to think just because we're deemed an essential service and people are stuck at home, they can say, hey, let me call my realtor and let's go looking at, at houses. That's not the intent of the essential services rule. So um, what, I, what, I'm, what I'm getting at here is that during this time, we're not shut down. We should be um, still working, still reaching out to our sphere, our current clients, any current deals that you have pending. We should be checking in with them and making sure that they're doing well. I know that um, from a marketing standpoint, you know, it may seem, what's the word I'm looking for, inappropriate to continue marketing, but it's not. You know, I, I was just on a webinar that I have to get back to after this, where um, Jason Pantana from the Tom Ferry system says, you never stop marketing. It's just, you have to change the message right now. It can't be, hey, everybody, it's Mike, you know, looking to buy or sell, call me. 
you know, it has to be more from a place of, of helping, you know, we're still working, we're here for you when you need us, uh, but obviously your safety and your family's is number one priority. Uh, I've been getting a lot of messages from other agents in my sphere of influence, just reaching out to me saying, hey, hope you're doing well, let me know if you need anything. There's nothing wrong with contacting your, your sphere of influence right now and just saying, hey, I hope you're doing okay, and let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Um, you know, I know a lot of us are still healthy. I know Mick, uh, who was on the call here a little while ago, he's healthy. He's, he's running around doing essential things. He had a walkthrough that he attended for us yesterday. Um, that deal needed to close. You know, he's an essential service. He was allowed to go there and attend the, the, the walkthrough. If you have a client in need, though, there's certainly ways that, that you, can, you can help them. Um, you know, so I kind of only half jokingly posted on my Facebook page, hey, I've got about 40 rolls of toilet paper if anyone needs any. You know, I know that the whole toilet paper on social media has become a, 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 a big kind of running joke, but um, the reality is that if someone needed a few rolls of toilet paper in one of my trips, I probably would throw it in a bag, drop it off on their doorstep and text them and let them know, hey, here's a couple of rolls of toilet paper. Um, I see Earl uh, saying that he's got a roll of disinfectant and he wipes down every surface before touching them. Uh, and he agrees, this is an opportunity to reach out to people and just wish them, them well. I was talking to another expert who said that, look, if you compare us to the restaurant business, to the hotel business, that, that income, those sales are just gone. So let's say it's two months um, those restaurants can't suddenly seat double the number of people when this whole thing is over. It's just, it, it, they, they can't catch up. But a lot of experts think that what's going to happen in the real estate business is that, yes, a bunch of people are going to be on, on hold right now. Buyers are going to tell you, I'm not looking right now. I don't want to risk getting infected. I don't want to risk going into other people's homes and infecting them. I get it. So, you know, they though are going to re-enter the market more than likely at a certain point. So we're fortunate in that, you know, let's say it's May 1st, May 1st, the, the gates may open and we need to be ready to help those people that have put their buying and selling on hold. Um, so I've kind of been uh, blathering on a bit. I'll, you know, if you have any questions or comments, you put them in the chat box or since we only have a handful of people on, you know, feel free to, um, you know, unmute yourself and comment if, if you'd like. Um, does anyone have any questions about, you know, how to deliver a message right now? Oh, by the way, one of the things Jason said in the webinar I was just on, he said that if you have any automated email drip campaigns going out right now, you probably should put them on pause or at least take a look at them and make sure that they are appropriate. You know, you don't want your usual message going out there if it's, you know, um, hey, don't forget about me. You know, I'm, I'm here if you, um, you know, I work hard for buyers. You know, your generic messages aren't necessarily the right sort of message right now. We have to tweak that message. So if you do have any automated um, drip campaigns going out, please put them on pause or at least edit them so that they're more appropriate to what's going on now. Mike, I have a question. I had an appraiser call today, a company that I had not heard of, and I told him I was gonna meet them there, and she proceeded to let me know that she looked us up in the MLS and found that the home was vacant and wanted my lockbox code, and it kind of came across a little bit demanding. Um, and I said, well, I'll be happy to meet you there. I'm within 10 or 15 minutes. Just let me know what day and what time, and I'll let you guys in, I'll stay in the driveway. And she said, well, I haven't accepted the order. Let me get back to you yet, or let me get back to you. And uh, that pretty much ended the call, and I haven't heard back. Um, how would you handle that? I hate to just give out lockbox just based on a phone call. I don't have an email. I don't know who they really are. So, you know, we still have to adhere to the rules of our multiple listing service and the National Association of Realtors, et cetera. We know that we can lose our licenses for giving out lockbox codes. Now that said, that is with regard to buyers and without the permission of the seller. So we know that, for example, with an appraisal, most sellers are gonna say, sure, give the appraiser the lockbox code. But to your point, David, you have to verify the identity of the person to whom you're giving the lockbox code. Now, 
more than likely that was the actual appraiser. But uh, I agree, it probably would be nice to be able to verify that person's identity. Um, what I probably might have just done a tad differently is I wouldn't have let them slip off the phone. I probably would have said, I probably can do that, but let me get all of your information, phone number, email address. Uh, I think appraisers even have license numbers, if I'm not mistaken. I know uh, loan officers do, and you're nodding your head, yes, David, do, uh, they do. I, th I think appraisers do have license numbers. Get their license number, you know, cover yourself, and then with the permission of the seller, they are allowed to enter using the lockbox. And appraisers do it all the time, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. But I guess my fear would be, in this already uncertain time, we don't wanna have any more delays than there may already be. You know, so if, if, if that appraiser doesn't get in there, it could cause a further delay on what's already gonna be an aggravated time. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, I know you didn't ask this question, but we just recently got a question from a seller about title transfer because the county is limiting the amount of time that title companies are allowed to go down and re record deeds. So I wanted to share some information. A lot of people don't know this. I mean, if you're on the team, you've probably heard us talk about this before, but um, I wanna just kind of reiterate it. Um, the difference between recording of the deed and title transfer, the two are not the same, okay? Um, I, so I could even pull up an email here that we got from uh, Russ, who's the head guy over at First Meridian. I'm going to I'm going to read this to you. Actually, let me share my screen and put it up. You guys can read along with me. Uh, let's see here. It just came in from Liz, our closer. She followed up on this for us. Here it is right here. Um, okay. So this is from Russ. He says, as we discussed, the legal transfer of property occurs when the executed deed is delivered to the title company and all funds are in place. Further, due to the current COVID-19 situation, our underwriter, Old Republic Title, is extending gap coverage to all deals and will be fully insured free of charge as of the date of our title commitment. So even if there is a delay in recording due to the counties completely shutting down, which he says is unlikely, there is no risk to the buyer or seller whatsoever. So essentially what that means, um, a lot of agents misconstrue the connection between filing of a deed, the recording of a deed at the county, and title transfer. Sometimes a deed won't get recorded for days or even weeks, especially if it's a bank-owned type deal. So your clients may say, hey, I'm not seeing it on the county website. Why don't I own this, this house yet? They do. Once title receives all the documents and the money, title has transferred. So it's a really important distinction to make uh, for, for your clients. You know, make sure that they understand that they're not at risk of not having their property transferred right now. Title companies, just like us, are adapting to the situation. Uh, by the way, I see Tony has joined us. I guess we had a little bit of uh, uh, difficulty getting in. Sorry about that, Tony. Welcome. Oh, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know what was wrong. It's just I couldn't log in. I was saying it. you had another meeting. I'm like, you had a secret meeting without me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, so what we're doing today, and I'll have to check and see if it's if it's working, uh, but we are broadcasting live to Facebook simultaneously. So Great. Uh, we'll see how that pans out. I don't know if a few people are watching there or not, but if they are, welcome. So Tony, just to catch you up, what, what, what we've covered is um, how we're currently working. And I mentioned the conversation you and Brenda had about it's not business as usual, right? It's, it's we're in essential service, but using the same restrictions that the governor, that the state have imposed upon us, no group meetings. It doesn't mean just showings for anybody willy nilly, but if someone needs to move, if they're gonna be homeless, or if, they, if we need to complete the sale of their property, we're allowed to continue working um, within those guidelines. Do you have anything to add to, to that? Because I know you've been talking to our attorneys as, as well. Correct, yeah. So basically when you have a 
uh, current transaction, it's not, not business as usual, but the logistics of the, the transaction should be going the same way. And but you have to uh, adhere to the guidelines of six feet apart, not group meetings. You know, I have agents telling people you can't bring you know your whole family to uh, a walkthrough. You know, <laughs> so uh, you know, it's, you know, we know we as realtors, we've seen that happen, and then and really be in communication with the title company and the lender and how they're going to do all of this without being face to face. And and a lot of title companies just are great are on top of that. And exactly what you said, Mike, that was a big question about closing and and signing and transfer of title to actual recording. And and I was saying a, a lien in Ohio is 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 valid if, if even if it's not recorded. Uh, it's just recording. It's just putting that stamp on it. And, and uh, uh, not ironic thing is that in Northeast Ohio, we've just been doing it this way for a long time where we, we do everything at once. Uh, in other parts of the state where they do roundtable closings, where they exchange checks and money is always exchanged before it's even recorded. So we're usually, you know, we do things a little bit differently up here, but it, it can be done and, and it's been working all right so far the last few days. So yeah. David put something in the chat box that he asked um, Howard Hanna, I assume Barrister's title, if they had complimentary gap coverage as well and didn't get a response yet. Um, what I recommend is if you have a pending deal that you do ask that title company, you know, what they're doing about filing, about title insurance coverage, um, just ask the right questions. That's the key. Um, so the top, Tony, the other topic we were hitting is that we're all stuck at home for the most part other than essential activities. But my plea to them is don't stop marketing. You know, just because you can't go out and do things and be at houses and meet people face to face, you know, don't stop marketing. It's just the message has to change a little bit. Um, do you have any advice for anyone on this call or who watch it later as to what they can be doing right now to continue to make their business not only survive but thrive when this whole thing is over. Oh, definitely. No, this is this is not um, a time to stop connecting with people. You just have to change the message a little bit. Just that you care that you're there for them if they need anything because you don't want to come out and say, I want to help you buy or sell a house. And hopefully uh, everybody watching this knows that we can't force people to buy or sell a house. It's not like we're selling something that we have to convince them to buy. You know, we just want to catch them at the time that they might need our services. So this is a time when you reach out to them because a lot of things are going to change for a lot of families and they might need to buy or sell a house. Uh, they, they, the change of, we're all working from home now. You might have people in two months. Uh, so uh, part of me feels there's a good percentage of chance that we're busier in, in three or four months from now than we would have been if we didn't have this happen. Because there's people all, you know, there's husband and wives, partners, families all at home trying to work and, and do schoolwork from home going, wow, we, we need a bigger house, you know. Or we need to get divorced. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> we need an office and we need it now. Let's get a, let's buy a house. Yeah. Uh, we have people that might have lost their job and be uncertain and they might have to move to another part of the city or state or, or whatever to go look for a job. They might have people that are worried about their retirement and go, wow, we really don't, we, we've been in this house you know, they have a big, uh, a bigger house. They should be, they should have downsized two years ago, but like now that their stock market and their retirement savings go, well, you should, we should sell now and downsize now. So there's things that are going to happen. They're still going to happen. The, uh, the, any of those listings that we had that had five people uh, placing in offers, we might over two months from now have two people. The house is still selling. It's just yeah. they had two offers instead of five. And you might not have buyer, you might have buyers in different financial or personal situations buying three months from now that we wouldn't have had now. So that's, I mean, if that kind of clears our, my opinion of what's going to happen. Yep. Um, so there's a question in the chat box that I mentioned vacant properties only. Am I not showing anything that's occupied? Also, the, uh, regarding the current conversation, we just had the discussion between realtors while waiting for the recording to complete. Can the key be given? So I'll answer the second part first. Transfer is transfer, guys. It, recording has nothing to do with transfer. The, the two are not equal in any way whatsoever. Once you're told the property has transferred, it's the buyer's house. So the answer is yes. Once you've been told that you have transfer, not recording, you can give the key. Um, so again, as far as showing houses, we have to follow the guidelines issued by the state. Um, I personally, 
have had a sore throat for seven days. So yes or no, is it a good idea for me to leave the house right now and be anywhere near other people? <laughs> no. Right, I, no. <laughs> no, I, I'm self-quarantining. I don't think I have corona. I mean, I think I, ha who knows? I don't know what I have, but I have no other symptoms. I doubt very much that I have the coronavirus, but until this dies down and bef until my sore throat is gone and gone for several days, I probably won't go anywhere. Uh, if you're going to show an occupied home, you know, we have to take all the precautions that we've, we've talked about that. So I don't think anyone's saying you can't show an occupied home. I don't think anyone's saying that you can't meet with buyers or sellers, but you certainly can't sit across the table from them. You know, you should be meeting far apart. And I suggest something like this. You know, you guys have all experienced some kind of online meeting at this point. Uh, a couple of months ago, I met a couple from Great Britain who had two houses to sell here in Cleveland, and I did my entire listing presentation over video chat. By the way, I was the only agent who did that. Everyone else talked to them on the phone. They sent emails back and forth, and uh, they talked to some really great agents, um, one of them who was their property manager who sells, I think he might be the number one agent in the state of Ohio for the number of sales, and guess who they went with to sell their two rental properties? It was me, partially because I took the time and they felt like they got to know me through a, through a video chat. It, it's a, it makes a difference. So um, you can't show properties by Zoom. Now that said, David, I think you've done this where you've actually done a video or FaceTimed with, with, with buyers. So the buyers themselves may not be comfortable walking through occupied homes, but these are services that, that you can offer. If they have to move and you're, and you're comfortable with going into occupied homes, taking all the precautions, that's one way you can serve your clients. Now, I think, I'm not trying to compare real estate agents to doctors and nurses, but you are somewhat putting yourself in harm's way by going into one or more occupied houses. So we have to be very cautious about how we do that. Tony, it looks like you're ready to chime in on that. Yeah, let me I'll put my broker hat on. Well, first, you, you don't have to share your screen anymore if you don't want to. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so that's one and two um you just you got to ask a few more questions so one we're not supposed to as agents uh legally take pictures of other people's houses so like we see pictures that were authorized by their agent so when we walk through a house technically we should have approval from that a owner uh that uh or listing agent saying hey i'm going to do a video tour of the house is that okay to ask questions if anybody's going to be there uh, uh if it's your listing uh you should basically be asking questions to the buyers who's coming through what precautions are they taking because someone's living there again we have to step it up a little bit for our clients because they might not be thinking this is uh is that your it's your listing who knows who's going through the house and what they're touching. Uh, so uh, I've been telling agents when they're showing houses, obviously uh, let the other agent know who's coming through, make sure their, their buyers have gloves, make sure they don't touch anything that doesn't need to be touched, make sure they're in, in sight at all times, you know, what they're doing. Uh, and uh, as for our listings, please try to make sure that's at you're asking these questions to secure your seller's house. Obviously, vacant properties, that's it's it's a lot a little bit easier, but there's gonna be someone else coming through. So again, you as your buyer, tell your buyer, we don't know who was through 10 minutes ago before we got here. Who what are they touching? I know your your first reaction, let's touch the faucets and let's open the fridge and let's do things. All the things that you're about to touch, Mr. or Mrs. Buyer or whoever they are, uh, someone else probably touched so again just help them out and uh and and you know be safe yeah so on the listing side we've changed our policy to no overlapping showings using the showing service uh that was a recommendation that came down from uh, uh oar um we've changed it to um we've, we we're trying to make the showings what we call no touch showings so we are advising our sellers that if the home is occupied that they should have all the doors open, they should have all the lights turned on, and we're instructing the agents not to touch anything, agents and buyers not to touch anything while they're in the, in, in the house. So they, the seller opens the door, literally. So all the doors are open, open the closets, maybe even open a few cupboards, 
light switches, everything, make it a no touch showing. And then of course, when the seller comes home, we're advising them wipe down everything anyway, wipe down your doorknobs, wipe down everything that, that, that people may have touched. Hopefully they're listening to our in instructions though. Mm -hmm. And oh, another idea I've given a few ages, I don't know if they've done it yet, but if you have a hot house, that there's a lot of showings coming up and people want to come see you can do like in a mike you did like that virtual open house you can do a virtual like showing say hey we're my seller if you have a seller that's very worried about things say hey listen i'll do it uh we have like 20 showings that want to come this week i'll give them a link we'll do this i'll walk through the house see if they have any more interest after that mm -hmm. and then actually do the the you know the interviews so or yeah or the showing Yep, and uh, I know I know David's going to cringe when I talk about video, but this is an ideal time to be doing a lot of video. You know, um, I've I've heard the Tom Ferry folks talking about the importance, especially now, of just some very basic video, you on screen talking about what you're doing. People are stuck at home. You know, what are they doing? They're either if they're not binging on Netflix. They're on social media right. and what, what better time to, you know, catch their attention and also deliver the message about who you are. So, you know, I see some of the names on the screen, sc screen here. There's some phenomenal agents in this meeting room right now. All of you who have your clients best interest in, in, in mind, as I always say, you know, don't think of it as imposing on them. Instead, you're a good agent. You're trying to help get them into your corner instead of having them deal with someone who maybe isn't as good as you. So uh, that's why I say you're not, don't feel like, like you're imposing on them. You guys have, you're, you're taking the time to educate yourselves right, right now. Who better than you to help someone during this tough time? That's good. <laughs> okay. Any last minute questions? I appreciate the sentiment, David. I feel fine, actually, honestly, other than a little, little scratchy throat. Unfortunately, I can't touch you through the <laughs> you are all safe but if you guys need anything um you, you can hit up tony um tony what what contact info do you want me to put in the chat box here uh my cell phone number uh 216-374-1269 and i'm going to put my email address okay everybody be safe out there and if you need anything feel free to message tony or me anytime and hopefully in a few weeks, we'll all be saying, lucky that's over. Right. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, all everyone. Right. See ya. Bye, everybody.